Uh, there's a um, emphasis on discipleship to not just be a learner or a follower of Jesus, but someone who's willing to take all of Jesus. Nice. To come to to come to Jesus costs us nothing because we 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 believe and God is able to grant to those who believe justification. But to follow Jesus now is an entirely different matter yeah. that costs costs us everything. The price of discipleship, the price of salvation is nothing, but the cost of discipleship is everything. So I read here in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and ca carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So there's no discipleship without an abiding in Jesus Christ. The one who said the sinner's prayer 20 years ago, but who since then stopped walking with Jesus, is in grave danger. We make grace of God something that's so magnificent, which it is. But we shouldn't be teaching that if someone is no longer walking with Christ, they are in a, in a secure place in terms of their salvation. Could it be that that person who doesn't come to Jesus was never in the, in the household of God to begin with? Why is it that Jesus says that if you come to me, you won't have to bear heavy burdens? In the days of the apostles of Jesus Christ, many false religious leaders or false shepherds were doing things that were self-seeking. They were doing they were promoting a religion that would enrich them and that would oppress people who were considered peasants or commoners and that would exploit them. Many people thought by following rules Kleenex, man. it's Kleenex, come on. Don't eat Kleenex. Or by keeping the laws that, that were given to them by the religious leaders, that this would somehow earn them salvation. In essence, Jesus is saying, the salvation that you seek is found in no one other, except through me. You can't find peace of mind. You can't find rest for your souls in anyone other than me. So, the discipleship of abiding in Christ goes beyond just learning the teachings of Jesus and hearing the teaches, teachings of Jesus, but goes to the very core of as Jesus says, eating his flesh and drinking his wine, or drinking his blood, being fully immersed in his personhood, taking on Jesus with priority of mind and devotion of heart. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So the life that we seek to live in God is only found in Christ. Amen. Jesus says, if you seek to keep your life, you will lose it. Yeah. But if you lose it for my, my sake, sake you, you shall win it back again. Ultimately, as Christ followers, we are called, we are commissioned, and we are taught. But in the sending forth of ourselves, and as we become, as Jesus says, the light of the world, or an extension of, him, of his Father's kingdom, we are then co-laborers and partakers of the, the kingdom of God. Jesus says, it is not those who hear the word that are justified, but those who obey the word that are justified. So the true faith that... that leads to salvation is one that bears forth fruit to make no falsehood here we are not saved by our works we are saved by faith in Jesus Christ and his atonement but as a result of that faith in Jesus Christ and his personhood 
we recognize that discipleship, as is biblically presented to us, is not optional, but rather is our obligation as we become fully immersed in Jesus Christ. In John chapter 16, Jesus made clear that the disciples wouldn't be able to accomplish their great mission until they were endowed from power from on high by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That marvelous feat took place on the day of Pentecost, when in the upper chamber, Peter, James, and John, and the others, minus Judas, received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then, as they were enlightened to the truths that the Messiah had taught them, the power within them activated them to do the works that they were called to do. And yes, although the, the, the fictional story of the angel asking Jesus how he would bring about the salvation and redemption of mankind through 12 ordinary fishermen seemed like a, a doomed plan from the start, we can see that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these things came to pass. So church, whether, whether we're still at the learning the calling pre-calling stage or we've been called or if we're in the stage of being commissioned we're finding out what our purpose here on earth is in terms of the kingdom where we fit into the kingdom and whether we're being trained or equipped by our master and whether we're we're seeking him and abiding in him in seriousness as we we, we recognize that we must as jesus says come on to him Matthew 11, verse 28. And then once we see that we have come, then we, of course, are called to go. In Matt, at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, we're told in Matthew chapter 28 that we're to go forth in all the nations and that we're to preach the Gospel and all things that Jesus has taught, making disciples of all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Joshua is calling. And if we do these things in the church, we will have we will have fulfilled the commission of being a disciple ourselves of Jesus Christ and helping our master as he forms more disciples for the future generations. Let us pray. Father, this night we've uh, clumsily looked through the the call, the commissioning the training and the sending forth of your disciples into apostleship. But today we need to appropriate this for ourselves, that you're, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and you're not just calling onlookers, you're not just calling crowds who want food, but you're calling crowds who want the bread of heaven, that want you, that want you in their fullness, that want to desire to put Christ and his kingdom first. Father, we ask that you would bless this church as we're on the cusp of going forth and being disciple makers in the nations. Father, we're still very much like that early group of disciples needing more training and more more lessons, Father. But as your Holy Spirit works in each one of us to, to, and the Father prunes each one of us to be effective, Father, we believe that there will be a harvest that even though there is great compassion for those who haven't heard the word, that compassion often leads to action. That compassion often leads to acts of virtue and courage and determination and even the fulfillment of your mission. Father, the harvest is twofold. There is a harvest of redeemed souls who will be in heaven with you but there is also the great harvest of the judgment where the angels will reap and and put and put into bundles into the fire father this we 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 know is coming so by because of these things we warn we warn men to repent we warn people not to be casual about the kingdom of god as we we are told by jesus that we must do all things to escape the judgment that is coming so, Father, I pray as we, we look into discipleship for those who are casual and those maybe who, who think that discipleship is an optional aspect of Christianity, that we would think twice and that we keep progressing in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. I think...
that verse there, uh, take my yoke upon you, is Matthew eleven twenty nine. Yeah, you can turn off the video now. Yeah. Okay.